Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. I thought I might start out just ensuring that um, before we talk about the future of networking, that we first talk about networking in the context of what you're going to see here at Web Summit over the next couple of days, because our industry um, has always been a provider into these kinds of innovation um, ecosystems, but aren't always visible. And so, historically, much of our innovation preceded innovation in other parts of the ecosystem. And so, um, wireless networking creates an opportunity for um, an app economy. No wireless connection, no high-speed connection, very cumbersome and difficult to think about yourselves operating flawlessly across applications. And so our job is to be invisible, to be just like oxygen, to be ubiquitous, have the connections be reliable. But if we do our job perfectly, we should be invisible to the end user. And so to that end, we're extremely excited about where we're headed next because what's different from what I just described is that our next network evolution is one where we operate with innovation in parallel. And I'll explain that in, um, in two contexts. But let me start with uh, the first slide here that describes networking and, in particular, where is the compute in the network. So if you look at the journey to the cloud, you're on my far left, your far right, you're in 100 milliseconds. So if you look at that, that's roughly the blink of an eye. In telecommunications, in the blink of an eye, you can, at the speed of light, get from roughly here to Australia. Um, but in the cloud terminology, that really allows you to do a bunch of things off-site. But what's happening right now um, is that the next evolution of our network moves us from the far right side of that um, slide to the far left side, which is sub five milliseconds. What, why is sub five milliseconds or at five milliseconds or even 10 milliseconds, why is that such a big deal for networking? The big deal in that is that that is a real-time network. If I were to flash a light with intervals that are sub five milliseconds, you would see continuous light. Your brain wouldn't perceive any delay whatsoever. And that's a game changer for innovators um, all around the world in use cases um, that are very broad and diverse. And so in my career in network evolution, we would normally evolve the network call the inventors, tell them what it was capable of, and then watch the network get consumed in greater and greater um, portions. But what we're seeing this time is we're getting called by the innovators saying, how fast will you have that ready? When can I get that in our geography? Because it's a game changer in a number of the things that you're going to see over the next couple of days, and I'll talk about a couple of those things. But along the way, as we were designing our 5G network, we made a discovery that the same things that one does in 5G by design could be retrofitted into your network uh, with a little bit of cleverness, a little bit of capital, and a lot of hard work. And so this morning, we announced a new capability, and that is we're going to open um, an innovation zone where we're going to provide this real-time wireless networking capability on existing networks. And we announced this morning um, a location in Palo Alto, um, in the heart of Silicon Valley, where a lot of innovation is occurring that will allow entrepreneurs to come in and test the benefits of real-time networking. And so as we think about real-time networking, real-time network is not about the network merely making a connection. It's a provi about providing computation capability compute very near um, to the customer itself. And so we're delighted about the opportunity to innovate in parallel with these companies as we build our next generation of technology. So what does that mean? Why, why is real-time networking helpful? We view it as a profound game changer for smart cities, for connected cities. Because as you think about like traffic light management, and how you automate and coordinate in real time how long um, lights are for red, green, 
Um, when you look at things like venues that let out after a concert, how do you do traffic management? To do those things at a remote location is not nearly as effective as moving into real-time operations. Another important use case is augmented reality, and this is one where you'll see us around these use cases as AT&T not only build the network, you'll see us make investments in some of these capabilities that use the network. And augmented reality is an important one for networking because when you see things like um, this augmented reality headset, um, it's in the outdoors. And one of the things that needs to occur for it to be in the outdoors is it has to have a very responsive network. It also has to be a very high-powered compute network or that headset will be augmented by a computer that the user will have to carry with them. And so augmented reality is one of the cases that really comes alive as we take networking into a real-time dimension because now we can put the compute, the computational intensity of the rendering of virtual reality and move much of it off of the device and back into the network. Another use case that you'll see there, which is an important one that we see, is in drones. Um, drones have a lot of uses for the network. You probably may have read this morning we deployed um, drones into Puerto Rico to augment the recovery there um, post-storm. 5G networks, real-time networks, don't make um, drones fly better. What they allow the drones to do is to have a control system and have the ability to have remote management be a lot more feasible so that the cost to deploy drones in urban environments or against specific use cases can be radically altered. And so as you think about how do we build the air traffic control systems for drones, the 5G technology, the real-time networking is an essential component of it. So we're delighted about um, the capability of being both a user in that technology and a network provider. One other use case which we view as um, probably the one that is the most vital is autonomous cars. So as you think about autonomous cars, the navigation systems are really going to be a function of the quality of the network. So autonomous car companies will be able to make trade-offs, and many people describe um, the autonomous car of the future as having a data center in the trunk. As you think about navigational systems, onboard won't be the entire answer because if there's a change in a traffic pattern and there's a need to adjust that map for the next driver, the only way for the system to provide that upgrade is to go back into the network. And so this is really the difference between a $1,000 data center in the trunk of the car and maybe $100 of compute in the car um, where the networks can be um, augmenting. And so if you look at this and you say, well, what is our vision for um, autonomous cars? We view it as capable of having live maps maps that are so real and so current that you can see the, with the proper sensor configurations, you can see things like um, the leaves blowing on a tree on the side of the road. And then instead of handing off phone calls, we would envision a future where you're handing off maps so that the maps are such high fidelity and such real time in information on traffic, road conditions, um, deviations, um, that that information is fed into the maps and then the, the, the car itself can operate in a very real-time environment with a much richer set of technology um, for navigation. And so those are, are just um, three of the use cases that come to mind as we start to think about real-time networking. And so real-time networking for us is not, these are not PowerPoints and pipe dreams. This is not about a vision, it's about actual deployments. Our timetable for deployment, as I mentioned right now, is we announced this morning that in the first quarter of 2018, we'll have our real-time edge compute network zones begin to come up, which will allow innovators to go try on the technology, 
as early as the first quarter of 2018. And then the 5G technology is coming out of standards this year and will be available for um, broader deployment for us later in 2018. So we wanted the technology to be available early in, for experimentation, the early part of next year, and then start commercial deployments by the end of next year. And so the network is really just around the corner for us. The last thing I wanted to talk about just very quickly is um, another important innovation in networking for us that solves a, a specific problem, and that is the digital divide. As you look at how networks get deployed, increasingly the cost of deployment is a characteristic of the proximity and how many customers that you have near one another because the cost of the technology can be deployed differently. And so the wider the technology, the more difficult to get the broadband speeds. Urban areas with multi-dwelling units tend to have very good economics. Rural and farming communities tended to have very bad economics. And so one of the things that we set about was trying to find a technology leapfrog that would allow us to serve some of those um, rural areas that don't have the, the prevailing economics. And we've come across a technology that we have roughly 200 patents on. And I'm going to run a video here on that technology. So you can see there that the technology takes advantage of power lines. The technology is not carrying broadband through the power line. It's carrying it around the power line. And that matters a lot because historical efforts to deliver broadband through the power lines tended to be expensive and very difficult to deploy because of the need to step up and step down voltages. And so what we were able to do is produce a system that allows for broadband capability that's up to 100 gig at a fraction of the cost of traditional fiber-based systems. That capability we call air gig is an augmentation of the wired business and the wireless business. And so that will provide us an excellent capability. Let me close with the thought that I started with. In order for the innovation that you're going to see here in the next couple days, for all of those megabytes, petabytes, terabytes to be carried over a network, the network has to work at a ubiquity of coverage and at a speed that will accommodate all of these magical things that you'll see. But important to its performance in the future will be not only that it's fast, but it'll be operating in a real-time capability so that as we use data to automate, that our automation cycles can be closed loop and not periodic. So as you think about control systems, control systems and the use of these great technologies really requires real-time networking. So as a bottom line, AT&T and our industry uh, following along with us will be ready when the time comes to deploy these great technologies you'll be seeing here over a couple of days. Thank you very much.